The console wars is closing to its end. We have four rounds to go and the PS3 is in the lead with a single point. Round 9 is up next, and in this round, I'll be making an in-depth comparison between multi-platform games. I'll be analyzing the games in terms of graphics and performance, so get ready for yet another very exciting round of the console wars. I know what you're thinking. It's common knowledge that Xbox 360 titles have been superior compared to their PS3 counterparts in the past. But um, has that changed after three years? Surely game developers have figured out the kinks of the PS3 by now. Because exclusive games on the PS3 are starting to look fantastic. I know a lot of you are going to pull the Uncharted 2 and God of War 3 cards in the comments, but the fact of the matter is that the majority of games released and sold on both consoles are multi-platform games. So no matter how good exclusive games may look, don't expect any compensation points from exclusive games in this particular round. But um, let's cut the chatter and get to it. The first game we're looking at is one of my favorite games of last fall, Rocksteady Studios surprise hit Batman Arkham Asylum. If you've played Arkham Asylum, you know that it looks great on all platforms. But um, are there graphical and performance differences between the Xbox 360 and PS3 versions? Let's find out. At a quick glance, you won't notice much difference. But when taking a closer look, we notice that the Xbox 360 version has slightly better anti-aliasing. Sorry, I mean anti-aliasing. I got some flack for my pronunciation in the GP around. Ah, potato potato. I think you got what I meant. So the slight anti-aliasing on the Xbox 360 softens some of the rougher edges, but apart from that, the games look almost identical. There is some subtle screen tearing in both versions of the game, but nothing that'll take away from the gameplay experience. But a major difference that repeats itself in pretty much every game in favor of the Xbox 360 are black levels. Previous to owning both consoles, I watched some comparison videos of the two consoles, and I always noticed that the PS3 versions of the games look a bit lighter in terms of contrast. I assume that this was a settings or connection issue, but the fact of the matter is, no matter what the connections, be it HDMI or component, super wide and RGB expand switch on or off on the PS3, the Xbox 360 video signal always seemed to have better black levels. And this translates into deeper looking shadows and better overall color depth on the Xbox 360. If you have a higher end TV, you may be able to compensate with your TV settings, but I for one was not able to match the levels of black I see on the Xbox 360 with the PS3. So keen-eyed videophiles like myself will enjoy slightly better black levels on Xbox 360 versions of games. But the difference isn't anything to write home about because it's also a matter of taste. Batman Arkham Asylum looks great on both consoles. In fact, it's hard to spot any significant differences, but I would say that the frame rate feels slightly smoother during intense fight scenes on the Xbox 360. Overall, Xbox 360 takes Arkham Asylum, but the differences are so subtle that I can't not recommend both console versions of the finest Batman game made to date. Modern Warfare 2 is undoubtedly the biggest multi-platform game of recent times. The game has sold over 15 million copies since last November and is on the track to being the best-selling game of all time. So how do the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions stack up? For the most part, Infinity Ward has done a fantastic job technically on the game. It's almost flawless on both platforms. A minor complaint against both versions is that the game runs at a sub hd resolution, but thankfully the anti-aliasing cleans up most of the rough edges. Both versions of the game seem to have identical textures, but the Xbox 360's better black levels bring out more contrast and detail out of the textures. It also seems that the PS3 version of the game is a bit more subtle in the lighting effects department. The Xbox 360 version has bloom lighting throughout the game, whereas the PS3 is missing the effect completely. The differences aren't massive, but again it's a clear victory for the Xbox 360. Next up is Dante's Inferno. Visceral Games received some praise for their last game, the excellent Dead Space. Their new game Dante's Inferno is, I think, a pretty solid game. It's an action-packed hack and slash with some religious undertones. The game only has two major flaws. Firstly, the game at its core keenly resembles the first two God of War games, and secondly, launching a game that pretty much looks and plays like God of War a mere month before God of War 3 is released is, in my opinion, an utter waste. But, in any case, I have to say that Visceral Games has done a fantastic job on the cross-platform release of Dante's Inferno. It's one of the very few games that look practically identical on both platforms. The textures, the shader effects, the frame rate, the amount of aliasing is pretty much the same on both consoles, and I really can't make a distinction here. So graphics and performance wise, Dante's Inferno is a tie. I can recommend the game for Xbox 360 owners, but for PS3 gamers, I still recommend getting God of War 3 before you consider Dante's Inferno because it's just around the corner. 
Darksiders is a game that has some of the same flaws as Dante's Inferno. It's always tough releasing a new IP when a looming giant of the same genre is launched in the same quarter. But in any case, Darksiders is a multi-platform game released by THQ, and they also did a very good job on the cross-platform release, because the games look almost identical. The textures, the shader effects, and anti-aliasing are all equal. But to my surprise, the PS3 version actually runs a bit smoother than the Xbox 360 version, which also suffers a bit from noticeable screen tearing. This is quite a rare result because I have not seen many PS3 versions of multi-platform games run smoother than their Xbox 360 counterparts. So the PS3 takes Darksiders for overall better performance. The next game is a title that has caused some controversy because of claims relating to a bad port over to the PS3. And unfortunately this is exactly the case. Bayonetta has to be one of the worst PS3 ports in recent memory. The PS3 version suffers from bland textures, a choppy frame rate, and some serious aliasing. Some of you may consider the comparing of Bayonetta as unfair, as it's known to be a bad port, but the fact is that Bayonetta is not the only game that is significantly worse on the PS3, and it's definitely a viable example of what you can expect from some multi-platform games. Lazy programmers or not, PS3 owners will suffer from bad ports more often than Xbox 360 owners. Bayonetta is a game that demands a high and constant frame rate, and the PS3 version does not provide this. The sequel to Bad Company was just released in the beginning of March and it looks pretty decent on both consoles. There's an astounding sense of realism in the game, destructible environments and the colors are nicely desaturated for the rough and gritty visual style of war you see in war epics like Saving Private Ryan. The first game was rushed to the market and both console versions suffered a bit from screen tearing and the PS3 version suffered a bit more. But I'm happy to say that the sequel has received some graphical and performance improvements on both platforms. The game still runs on the same Frostbite game engine, but everything has been tweaked a bit and the game seemingly runs better, and definitely looks better. And I'm also quite glad to say that the textures, the dynamic lighting effects, particle effects, and explosion look equally good on both platforms. But still, I definitely do notice some more screen tearing on the PS3 version of the game. I also noticed that the better black levels on the Xbox 360 version really add to the graphical and visual style of Bad Company 2. But yet again, the differences are so subtle that it's nothing for the Xbox 360 fanboys to boast over. But a result is a result, and the Xbox 360 version of Bad Company 2 runs and looks better. Next up is Need for Speed Shift. Racing games have always been amongst the best and worst looking games on all platforms. You find your console defining racing games, and some god awful piece of crap. Luckily Need for Speed Shift is one of the best looking racing games out there. And when I saw the TV commercial for Need for Speed Shift I thought, wow, there's the Mona Lisa of racing games. Well the actual game turned out to be more of a cheap knockoff, but still the game does look good. I especially enjoy the depth of field and motion blur effects that really add to the illusion and speed. But uh, which console version of the game looks and performs better? And right off the bat I have to say that the Xbox 360 version has better anti-aliasing and the game runs at a higher frame rate. The anti-aliasing on the PS3 is a bit more of a blur effect and really takes away from the sharp curves of the cool cars. The effect also seems to blur out most of the textures as well, which gives a huge graphical benefit to the Xbox 360 version. The lower frame rate of the PS3 version definitely takes away at higher speeds as it seems to affect the response time of the controls. Overall, the better graphics and stable frame rate make the Xbox 360 version of Need for Speed Shift, hands down, the version of choice. Some of you may remember a couple of years back, there was some controversy about EA Sports games. Xbox 360 versions ran at 60 frames per second, as PS3 versions ran only at 30 frames per second. PS3 fanboys were not happy, there were bodies left and right, and EA Sports got scorched pretty badly. Luckily fanboys are short in their anger, and all was forgotten after PS3 versions started to run at 60 frames per second in 09 versions of EA Sports games. So where are we now after 3 years? I'm happy to say that Peter Moore's EA team has done a good job making both console versions graphically equal. So while it may have been that the Xbox 360 versions of EA Sports game were superior in the past, the PS3 has now caught up and in terms of performance and graphics, the games are now pretty much equal. So it's a tie for NHL 2010. Resident Evil 5 may have been released over a year ago, but I still consider it to be one of the best looking games on both consoles. And the game does indeed look great on both the Xbox 360 and PS3. The PS3 version of the game looks slightly less saturated, and some textures look a bit softer. Frame rate also seems to take a small hit on the PS3 when the action gets hectic. 
I noticed very little drop in frame rate on the Xbox 360 version. So once again, I'm gonna have to give this round to the Xbox 360. Get ready to get to the chop up because the eternal fight between aliens, predators, and colonial marines continue in this latest installment of AVP. The licensed games have the tendency to, um, to basically suck. There are some exceptions, and for the most part, AVP games have ridden along those lines. The game runs on the Unreal Engine 3, which I have to admit is starting to look a bit outdated. I'm not entirely sure that the engine is the best choice for the dark and brooding environments of the game, because everything just looks a bit vague and blurry, no matter what the platform. We have to decide the winner here, and I must admit that the Xbox 360 looks a bit sharper in most aspects. The textures, the lighting effects, and bump macking on the Xenomorph infested walls look sharper on the Xbox 360. Both versions of the game run at a stable 30 frames per second, but I really can't say that the graphics blow me away on either console, so it's a small victory. But it's pretty clear that the Xbox 360 take this one as well. As you guys have Last noted, but definitely not least is a game that once was the PS3 exclusive. That was until Microsoft flashed some serious dough at Square Enix and persuaded the franchise over to the Xbox 360. I think Microsoft took out the old checkbook just to prevent the PS3 from having exclusivity of a game that may result in Xbox 360 gamers jumping ship and joining the PS3 bandwagon. I think the core audience of Final Fantasy has always been on the PlayStation, so I'm pretty sure it's going to sell more on the PS3, but can the Xbox 360 version compete with the once massive PS3 exclusive? And the short answer is no. Final Fantasy XIII is a massive game, the game will last you over 50 hours, and 50 hours of high definition graphics including textures will take a massive toll on the disk space. To be precise, the game takes up 40 gigabytes of a PS3 Blu-ray disk, and you can probably calculate that it's not going to fit over 3 DVDs, which you find on the Xbox 360 version of the game. So what they did to fit the game over 3 DVDs is that the cutscenes are actually running at 576p and upscale to high def. So that's right, the cutscenes on the Xbox 360 version of the game are actually running at a sub HD resolution, while on the PS3 they're running at 1080p. And I can tell you that when playing the game off a big 40 inch screen, the differences in detail are significant. While the major differences to the games can be found in the cutscenes, the transparency and dithering effects on the hair of the characters look much cleaner on the PS3. And it also seems that there are less shadow effects on the Xbox 360 version of the game. So for once it seems that the Xbox 360 has a mediocre port on its hands. Final Fantasy has a history of being a PlayStation title, and PS3 fans will be happy to know that they will be getting the best version of Final Fantasy XIII. As you guys have no doubt noticed, the trend of multi-platform Xbox 360 games running and looking better is still ongoing. The PS3 has played catch-up, but I can't say that I've come across a multi-platform game that looks significantly better on the PS3, and I don't expect to. The Xbox 360 has been widely accepted as the main development platform because of the reasons I explained in the GPU and CPU rounds. For one, the Xbox 360 has the anti-aliasing benefit in some games with the embedded DRAM. Secondly, the Xbox 360 is easy to code for because of the traditional multi-core architecture. And third, the Xbox 360 was the first out of the gate and it has a larger market share. Even though the PS3 could offer benefits like higher detail textures, thanks to storage space of Blu-ray, developers are not going to be investing money and time into making PS3 counterparts look any better because PS3 game sales aren't matching the game sales of their Xbox 360 counterparts. So this may not come as a surprise, the Xbox 360 takes round 9, and the victory is well deserved, as while the differences are subtle, and the gap between the different console versions of games has become smaller, the differences are still very real, and on the average, multi-platform games still look better and run smoother on the Xbox 360. There are some exceptions, but those are few and far between. The score is now tied up at 4, and in the next round we'll be taking an in-depth look at what the future has to offer for both consoles. So stay tuned for the next round, and just to clear up some confusion, I am in fact not John for Lakers, my name is LP, and my Techno Buffalo content is posted on John's channel. If you're interested in seeing my content, check out my own channel, where you can find all my content, including the console wars. Catch you later, LP signing out. <laughs>